Amen. All right. So man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out from the mouth of God. So I will give you an overview about this passage, about this text. A, a, a context on this one. So earlier, uh, Val read uh, chapters uh, verse 1 to 4. Okay? Um, Jesus was, during that time, um, Jesus was taken, right? Right after uh, Jesus had his baptism in River Jordan, the Spirit of the Lord, uh, uh, form, a, form as a dove, descended from heaven and took Jesus to the wilderness, right? So that's where Jesus was uh, fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And at the end, he got hungry, right? So that's where uh, temptation comes in, the devil comes in. That if you are a son of God, he was questioning, that if you are a son of God, turn this rock into bread. But what God's answer, what Jesus answered, he answered, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out from the mouth of God. So I pray, brothers and sisters, that we will truly digest the word of God this morning. That our hearts are open. That the Lord God will speak through us. Amen? Praise the Lord. So this was um, quoted as well on the book of Deuteronomy. On 8 uh, verse 3. So if we are going to read it. And it says there, And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives every word that comes from the mouth of God. In this passage, brothers and sisters, um, God is giving us two messages, two key points. Next slide, sis. One is where all of us have been tempted. Second is the word of God on how Jesus repel or rebuke Satan through the word of God. Amen? So oftentimes, temptation refers to physical satisfaction. I think all, every one of us will agree. This is, where, this is where it becomes a hindrance, right? For us to, to come to Jesus to worship him. Because of our physical or personal satisfaction. And the second is the word of God refers to, as I said earlier, spiritual enrichment. Amen? It's amazing, right? Jesus, the son of God, he is blameless. He is righteous in all his ways. But then he himself is not exempted from the temptation. How much more us... Brothers and sisters, none of us are also are exempted. All of us are subject to temptation. And unlike Jesus, it's up to us if we have that word. Amen? Hallelujah. So let's go tackle first temptation, which becomes a hindrance. Why is it too hard for us to come to Jesus? Or why is it too hard for us to go back to the word of the Lord? I think I can summarize it in three aspects, which we can find it in, um, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. Please, can you? I'll go back. So next? No, 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 no. Slide. Yes. So the desires of the flesh, desires of the eyes, and pride of life. I think we can all agree with this one, right? These are the top, I believe. The main ones that, you know, hinders us in following Jesus, even hinders us in reading the Bible. The desires of the flesh. What do you mean the desires of the flesh? Something that satisfies you. Right? 
like instead of having time, having your quiet time for the Lord, you often choose to be with friends, go out, right? Or it can be worse, sexual immorality, physical satisfaction, which in our generation today is very rampant. I think we can all agree with that one, right? It has become a norm, sadly. But that is the desire of the flesh. We can read Galatians 5.19. The desires of the flesh. Can we all read? Now the works of the flesh is evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like this. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So this is the result, brothers and sisters. If you desire to satisfy the flesh, lust of the flesh. It's the main one, right? This hinders us in following or get to know Jesus more or deeper or having a relationship with God. Because of the desires that we have. Second is the desires of the eyes. Right? So what do we understand that about the desires of the eyes then? If you go to the mall and you see something nice, right? <laughs> so it's a, uh, the difference between wants and needs, right? <laughs> so the desires of the eyes. So you decide, okay, I want it, especially with, with tags, 10% discount. <laughs> 50% off. Are you guys guilty, right? <laughs> oh, I want this. 50% off. Before it was 600. Now it has. it is 599. <laughs> At least there's a discount, right? I mean, that's us. I mean, that's natural reaction, right? It is true. It is happening. So the desires of the eyes. <laughs> and for husband... And warn you, let us read in Matthew 5.28, what it says there. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with a lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So be mindful, brothers, especially the husbands. It's okay to appreciate, yes, of course. If you see uh, a nice thing, right, a beautiful it's okay to appreciate, but if you appreciate it, accompany it with motives or desires, that's where you fall into sin. Amen? So let us be reminded. And the last one is the pride of life. The pride of life often refers to self-righteousness. God hates or opposes the proud. Amen? In James 4, James chapter 4, verse 6, and it says, but it's, he gives us more grace. God gives us more grace. That is why scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Why God opposes the proud? What do you think, brothers and sisters? Why does God hate the proud? Let's, let's read in Psalm 10, verse 4. Everyone can read? In the pride of his face, the wicked does not seek him. 
all his thoughts are, there is no God. He is being self-righteous. He does not listen to the word of God anymore. Because a person full of pride, he thinks whatever he desires to do, whatever he wants to do, is right in his own eyes. That is why it's dangerous, brothers and sisters. So God calls us to humble ourselves before him so he will lift us up. Amen? So these are the things that hinders us not to obey Jesus. So we must be aware. Let us be reminded the flesh the desires of our eyes, the pride that we have within us. Amen? So what are these things? These are worldly pleasures, correct? And you can consider this what? Worldly pleasure means this, is, this will not last long. This is only temporal. If we continue to read in um, 1 John uh, chapter 2, verse 17. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But who do, whoever does the will of God abides forever. Amen? So these things brothers and sisters, that sometimes we have the urge and sometimes we have the thirst of our flesh. These are worldly things. These are temporal. These can go. These are not permanent. These can go away. You may enjoy now, but later on, you will go back to the same state as before. Amen? So let us be reminded. We are not exempted with temptation. So we must have the word of God as our defense. We must be ready at all times, especially we are Christians. We are followers of Jesus Christ. Amen? So like... Do not be deceived like um, the scriptures is telling us to surround ourselves with good people with the same heart, heart of Jesus Christ. But it also warns us that bad company ruins morale. So let us be wise, brothers and sisters. I mean, let us be reminded of that. All the answers that we are trying to seek are in the Bible, are in the Word of God. All those questions that we have, we can find the answers solely from the Word of God. So this is basically what God is trying to tell each and every one of us this morning. How often do you read the Bible? Ask yourself. Ask the person beside you. Or better yet, do you still have time to read or meditate on the Word of God? Right? So ask yourself. Do I still have time? So let us go back to the word of God, brothers and sisters. Next slide, sis. Next. Now we go back to the word. It refers to spiritual enrichment. This is what we actually need. 
Amen? So what can we get out of the word of God? Next. Word of God is the sword of the spirit. Can living and active spread out by God and we can find salvation with truth the word of God. Amen? So let us read Ephesians 6. What does it say? It's too small. <laughs> but, but you can open your e-Bible or if you have a Bible with you, better. So you can read with me. Amen? So this is what it says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 to 18. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand firm, stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication to that end. Keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Sword of the Spirit. Now why do we have to do this, brothers and sisters? Why? Why? Because God is spirit. And as the children of God, we ought to worship God in spirit and in truth. God is seeking a person with a contrite heart. Broken spirit. Weak. We find strength in the word of God. This is how powerful the word of God is which we will overcome the temptation, which will overcome the worldly pleasures. Amen? Next one, living and active. Let us read in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, and of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. It's living and active. Who among us here experience the word of God comes alive? Raise your hands. Amen. I'm just going to share a short one. Um, we had this opportunity to go out uh, to preach the gospel in other nation, which we are called, each and every one of us, to preach the gospel. Right? So if you look at, if you read Luke 10, all of those, what is written in, in that book came to life when we were outside. That's, we, that's how I was able to experience the word of God comes to life. Another example is that seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Who among us ask and it was given to you? Right? We, be, we have been praying, praying, asking God, Lord, give us a job. Lord, give us a visa. Lord, would you, Lord God, heal? Heal us. And God has granted you. So the word of God comes to life. Amen? I'm sure everyone experiences that, right? Amen. Hallelujah. So God, the word of God is living and active. Next, it's spread out by God. Let us read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. It says, all scripture is spread out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, 
for correction and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. We, most of the times hear this, right? The word of God is profitable. Reproof for correction. Indeed, right? Because you cannot deny it. If you read the word of God, you cannot deny it. But if someone tells you to do this, to do this, at sometimes you don't <laughs> accept it, right? Amen? But in the word of God, it's laid out crystal clear. So the, so the scripture is profitable for teaching. For training in righteousness. That is why it is important for us to truly really soak ourselves in the word of God. Amen? And this, in the scripture, we will find life, salvation. In John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5, I think when I get end, <laughs> least. We're gonna finish, we're gonna finish soon. So it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And he was in the beginning with God, all things were made through him, and without him, and was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men, the light that shines in darkness, and darkness has not overcome it. If you have the word of God, darkness will not overcome it. Each and every one of us, brothers and sisters, we are the light of this world. If you are truly true to your name, as a Christian, you will have God's word in you. Amen? So this is a reminder for us. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. Whoever chooses to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for the sake of the gospel of the word of God will save it. Be reminded. Hallelujah. Over time, open times our problem is why um, we don't have time because we do not know what is our priority. Next is. Do you ever know your priority? Brothers, there is no multitasking in the Word of God. You can't be reading the Word of God and at the same time watching Korea novela or whatever. Or watching a movie. It cannot be done. I think we can all agree, right? We do not know our priority. Friday. Come to church. So I have to work. I have to feed my family. No, I have to go with my friends. They have invited me for so long. And why not invite your friends to come to churches? And then afterwards, you go. Right? No, I have other things to do, important things to do. Isn't hearing the message of God important? Is reading the word of God important? Of course it is. That is a problem for us because we do not know what is our priority? We are totally succumbed by the world. 
I went for a holiday last year, right? And obviously, if each and every one of us will go for a holiday, you'll get excited, right? Don't you get, don't you get excited if you go for a holiday? Very, very much, of course. Of course, you'll get excited, right? You get to see your family. You get to see your old friends. You get to be in your hometown again. And each and every day you have activities. Correct? Each and every day. Even your friends whom you have been <laughs> neglected for so long or you have been spoken to for years and years and years suddenly will appear in front of you. Right? It is true. And because of our busyness, we tend to forget to meditate the Word of God. And I am guilty of that as well. When I was on a holiday, I hardly had a chance. That's why I believe that today, God is telling us, go back to the Word. What is your priority? This is what we are going to ask ourselves, brothers and sisters. We do not know our priority. God is telling us every time, so many times, each and every sermon, messages, God is trying to remind us We have to go back. Jesus is just waiting for us, right? Oftentimes we will think, oh no, I'm not worth it. Uh, I haven't been to church for so long. Uh, I, I'm, I'm ashamed to go back. I'm ashamed to go back because I have been absent for so long. This is the works of the enemy. He is trying to poison your mind for you not to come. But you have to persevere. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. You have to persevere. Tell that to your brothers and sisters sitting beside you. Go back to the word of God. Know our priority. God is our priority, brothers and sisters, before anything else. Amen? So we prioritize God first before anything else. Set aside all those things. Today is the time to, to fellowship with the Lord, to hear His word, to hear His message. So give your time to God today. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Next. This is why we're going to close. In John, Joshua, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. This is the promise of God, isn't it? Right? God's promise is not to harm us, but to prosper us. But is it to prosper us to have all those material things? No, definitely not. But for us to truly grow in the knowledge of God, fellowship with the Lord. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And last, this is where we're going to close in Psalms chapter 16, verse 1 to 11. This can we post it? Can we plush it? It's Psalms chapter 16, verse 1 to 11. I want everyone to read it. Amen? Yes. 
Amen? Hallelujah. So everyone, let's read it. Protect me, God, for I take refuge in you. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good besides you. As for the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who take another God for themselves multiply. I will not pour out their drink, offerings of blood, and I will not speak their names with my lips. Lord, you are my portion and my cup of blessing. You hold my future. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my conscience instructs me. I keep the Lord in my mind always because He is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also rests securely. For you will not abandon me to Seoul. You will not allow your faithful one to see the pit. You reveal the path of life to me. In your presence is abundant joy. In your right hand are the eternal pleasures. This was the prayers of David. And let this be our prayer as well, brothers and sisters. Now we're going to sing one song and I want you to meditate on these words. I want you to go back, internalize, and ask yourself, how often do I go back to the Word of God? Ask for forgiveness. God, His arms is open wide for each and every one of us. He wants us to draw closer to Him. After all, we don't need anything else but only Him. So I want you to ask yourself, pray, ask for forgiveness to God as we sing this song. Throw back to God.
say that she says, Lord, God, we find life. Father, we come before you with a humble heart. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, of all our iniquities, all our shortcomings. Lord, would you renew me? Renew us once again. Transform us, oh Lord, to be more of you and less of ourselves, oh Jesus. You are all what we wanted, oh God. Lord, help us. Would you be upon us, oh Jesus? May we glorify your name all throughout our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.